Greetings from the future. Welcome to the metaverse. Thank you for joining our show today and be sure to follow us on YouTube. And subscribe. And subscribe. Yes, follow us and subscribe on YouTube. Today's topic, which is communication, culture, and etiquette in the metaverse. Basically, yeah. how we value people. I think etiquette, uh, when you watch a video and you ask people multiple times to subscribe, is that a form of proper etiquette or not? You know, or, or at how many times does it become not proper etiquette? If you mention it once, that's okay. But if you go to twice, three, four, six times in a video, at what point do you wear out your welcome and then it's not proper etiquette? I agree. I, I even think that once is too many. I, I really hate asking people to do things for me, but one has to ask. And, you know, that's the way of the world without asking people to subscribe and like our videos. But um, I'm sure some people are going to be excited to hear about cyberbullying. Wait, there's bullies here? There's people that don't know proper etiquette? I actually kind of cut you off before you were acknowledging Chris. So that might not be proper etiquette as well. So let's, let's, let's get over here to Chris and, and acknowledge. Okay. Him. Chris. Communication and um, ethics and etiquette in the metaverse. I think that's a very, very big topic in the end. It's a very important topic because I think there will be a development in the future. The inhabitants of the metaverse, the users, all the people that will uh, be around here, we need to find a way to interact. There's no way around that. And even that people are coming from so many different countries, from so many different backgrounds, it's so important that we find um, a proper way to get together and not to be rude or to be understanding, to try to help, because we will see that we have not just a language barrier, I guess that we will see that we have a technological barrier. So some people will have better equipment than other people will have in the metaverse. Some people will be able to do more things like feeling haptics if they have a certain uh, technology applied. Others won't do that. They won't have it. But when you're playing a game together with a person that is better equipped, those people might have an advantage. So my opinion is also um, a rule of fairness to say, well, I do have this. How do you get around with this game? And uh, should we play together in a team and support you or whatever? I think we will see some, some new types of um, etiquette in, in, in a certain way sides of the of the real world but on top of that the real world communication with people is still also applying here in the metaverse but we have to keep in mind that we have some additional things we have to think about and uh, we always have to bear or keep in mind that all these people that we see here all these different characters they're not cartoon figures. They are human beings. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. As I, much... Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yes. For some people, the biggest, the, like with the thing that I wrote down actually was feeling, not people not being able to feel here. So if some people are able to feel and other people are not able to feel, like, you know, I think that could hurt some people's feelings as far as etiquette would go, sure. So, I mean, you know, ev everybody should be allowed to have feelings. Absolutely. Well, that's sort of like the real world, right? If you have people that are sociopaths or whatever right <laughs> so which brings us to the next slide <laughs> setting expectations you know real life versus the metaverse and 
you know, in terms of feelings, I think that as a cartoon character, some people think that one do doesn't or, you know, don't have feelings, does not have feelings. And, you know, I could basically lean over and, you know, stick my finger in your eye and it wouldn't affect you at all, but it does. It's rude, it's disrespectful, and it's violent. And, you know, so it doesn't when hurt you when physically per se, but... When not welcomed, you know, on the other sense, I feel like we're all caught up in what you can't do, but there should be places where you can have permission. Like for me, when you have a bubble on, when people come close to you, you can't feel anything. And I do feel like you can actually have another, a, a different sense of feeling with somebody when you put your bubble down. Like when you give somebody a hug, you can kind of you know, you could really kind of feel that hug. There's like a magic to it with, with the boundary on you, you can't, you can't feel it. So I do feel that setting these expect, you know, setting expectations. Wow. You know, it's, it's there. So, I mean, what are your expectations, John? You are here in the metaverse for quite a while. You're using VR um, environments like this. You're building VR environments. So when you set up a space and you are inviting people, what are your expectations? Do you do you think like someone who's coming to a talk like this could always be um, participating? For example, is is there something um, uh, j just by behavior that you definitely expect? Yeah, expect is one thing. Hope is another thing, and what one gets yeah. is a third thing where I think that hope is that everyone acts in a civilized manner, and if someone comes to a talk, they sit and listen to the talk, they're not disruptive, they don't try to you know walk around the stage, etc. I mean, things that you just wouldn't do, you know, it goes back to this setting expectations in her real life versus the metaverse where you know and eric you you've mentioned this a number of times it's you know the test really is if you won't if you don't do this in real life you shouldn't be doing it in the metaverse either but you know that's why we have these tools as eric mentioned you know we have boundaries that we can apply in various worlds, uh, you know, VR chat, for instance, there's other controls where you can, you know, fine tune who can see you or hear or say something to you. In Horizon, you can escape into your little escape pod. I mean, you know, the, there's a lot of emphasis that's been placed on safety in the metaverse, which is good, but it would be a lot better if we could just all get on and act like civilized human beings. I mean, I know that we are away from being civilized, but it would be nice if we could, you know, just all get on, work together towards being better humans, towards a better planet. You know, we thought when chat lines and, you know, people started jumping on the internet with modems. I mean, back in the days where, you know, I mean, I, I love that connect noise, but, you know, we, we've done a number of these chats now on various topics, including democracy. And democracy is something that I think, you know, can only occur if people treat each other like human beings instead of looking at people as, you know, I don't know. I mean, as, as someone that's out to get you or, you know, if this particular, who knows? It's, it's very difficult to say exactly what the motivation is. But, you know, let's move on here to maybe one of the positive aspects of what we're going to be talking about today, and that's 
exposure to culture that uh, virtual reality or the can expose people to a number of different cultures and you can experience what it's like to be there. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. So for me, like, I think it's very interesting on the topic of exposure to culture that we immediately go to religion as like the different visions of culture. Uh, when I would want to go see these other amazing places of the world, uh, seeing the monuments that they had, the history, museums. And when you go in there, that will be an element of the culture that you're going to see. The foods, you know, where do you guys come from? What are you guys all about? And I feel there's so many different ones out there to get a taste of all of those. And I feel like taking this full circle with being here and talking about the democracy of the metaverse, it's now where do we have as far as a universal, because I'm interested to see, you know, where, you know, the rubber meets the road as far as, okay, we have all these different cultures in here. What are we going to adapt as, hey, this is the way everybody should act within this space you can go into specific spaces that could cater to the certain needs that you have, which I think those need to exist here in the metaverse as well. But as far as like um, having a place in France, like when I go there, I would love it to be that experience of that culture. When I go there, as far as the music and the sounds, like how close can we get to the feel of that place actually being there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we can. I, I personally believe we can experience certain things, historical sites, present day sites. I think it, you know, really depends on the bandwidth and <laughs> the technology. I think at some point we'll have real VR walkthroughs of these places in real time where we'll be walking through a particular present day site you know perhaps the eiffel tower in paris or something like that while real people are there as well and you know, it'll be very interesting technology See, and I that's think, a is true to... metaverse right multiple dimensions existing at that same time and you know, sometimes when people feel a spirit or a presence being in a space, it could actually just be, you know, it's the metaverse. There's other people visiting, you know, the visiting these places. So very interesting when you really think about it in that light. You know, I mean, um, experiencing a culture in a cultural space, let's say you're going to a uh, reconstruction of the ancient Rome, for example, that is definitely a cultural um, experience. And now, um, do you expect to get more information to find um, people that will in detail explain it to you? Do you think you, you will have the impression of the culture just by using the environment? Or do you feel that there must be more in the metaverse? Definitely more, and I think that's where world builders need to expand. And, you know, one of the complaints I, I hear all the time about metaverse, when you look at the metaverse as being a series of worlds, is that it's empty, that you go to a space and, well, you know, it's cool and whatever, but there's nothing there that instructs you on something or really provides value other than you know visual value if if you can have that so you know i think a space needs to be created that is educational that you go in there and there's you know guides or there's audio attached to objects that teach you about things no, uh, I think that's uh, well. That's what was coming to me was uh, 
when you go to these places uh, like ancient Rome to have Caesar or to have like some of these famous talks that have been scribed out there, get an actor. This is where acting is going to come into VR is you're going to get these people who are going to be able to master these people of the past and really go in and deliver those performances and people can go and experience that. I mean, this is, this is amazing as far as tapping into the culture. History also is very important in understanding that. Yeah, I mean, that sort of you know, reminds me that we can actually do that today. We could create a character, a famous character, a Abraham Lincoln or whoever else comes to mind using Real Illusions character creator program, and we can import that into Unity and upload it to, you know, Old Space VR, have an animation added to it, have is something, but it's you know, it's just an animated character, so it, it doesn't have any type of intelligence. W what would be really cool to get to is to have a bot, if you will, or a character that can actually do things according to what's happening in the environment. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I love the bot element as far as having somebody that can impersonate to a certain extent, but I feel like this also is high level acting. That is like the person, the soul to where, you know, you take somebody who is a master actor who has studied this technique for so long. And that's that human experience, right? To where they can add just that, that person. And I feel like that's some of these in an amazing movie. You're like, wow. That was really an amazing performance. So I do feel like that's where the acting is going to, you know, come into play as well. You know, being able to deliver it also. I mean, when when it comes to um, understanding a different culture, you will have to understand the whole environment. Let's say because culture is mostly an influence that is coming from so many different. Um, parts and and um, things that uh, uh, people that are living in a special culture are, are being exposed to for for me in many many years. In the end, so to understand a different culture, um, do you think it would be possible to have a place in the metaverse where you could go in and live like a, a person from the African countryside? or two or three days to really see what would the person do today? What is their work? How do they learn? How do they entertain themselves? And so on and so on. How do they um, um, eat? Do they live together with their animals, for example? How, you know, the, the whole structure. Do you think that could be possible? Yeah, I, I think, I think, like, as you're saying that, the ideas that popped into my mind as far as like experiencing these things. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to literally be in three days of experience, but I, I feel like there's, there's a real truth to that to where like you could almost sleep, you know, like, yeah. What, what, what boundary could, can we push this? Can we actually go in and experience, um, it's like timeless, right? Could you go back to with the dinosaurs? You know, they recreate them and, and you're, you're in the game and you're hiding from these huge animals like to survive in those times. It's almost endless of what we can create with this stuff. And I can totally see that happen because uh, in this world, living vicariously, right? Creating these really unique experience that in the real world don't exist. But here, it's possible. You know, all of time. P people want to time travel. And I feel like, you know, you, you that's part of the back to the future. And, you know, people love these uh, movies, these iconic things, because everyone always, oh, if I could go back in time. So what if you can go you know, here we can make that possible to where you can go to all these time periods, which 
is immediately going to be a huge draw for people because they're going to be able to experience things we can't in the real world. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, experience things that we can't experience in the real world that, you know, we can provide amazing experiences. But, you know, what, what happens when it comes to an experience like this, where, you know, this can be provided in the real world and, you know, which is a better experience? Listening to a news show like ours in the real world, you know, listening to it in VR, which is it? It's ultimately going to come down to that, I think. Well, I feel like it's two different types of news. One type of news could be your local news that's giving you the news that's immediately happening close to you and then a small amount of global news. The news that we're reporting here is metaverse news like where can you go exploring what the possibilities are in the future and where things are going and so people that are into technology will have an interest in this the thing that people know about the metaverse is that it's a place where bad things could happen <laughs> you know i mean i found that people either don't know anything about it and this is just the general public right or they feel that it's bedlam and you know when one looks at certain worlds and you go to them and you're not um familiar with how to act i think then you know it can be a bit confusing but it really goes back to what we said earlier one needs to be if you're not gonna if you don't act like that in real life you certainly shouldn't be acting like this in VR, you know, it, it's not. That's very true, but you know, I think that we could. We everyone gets so caught up in the boundaries and borders, and you know, the negative experiences. It's so important to have these enlightenment experiences here as well. How about having worlds with the sound frequency of like ohm and stuff like that, to where like you've had a day. And you just want to go into like a surreal space and realign your energy. How about having those places? Because the world needs more healing. So it's like we can look at the storm clouds like, you know, they're, they're all there. But also, like, I think it's important to acknowledge them. But be like, what kind of healing spaces do we need to comp create here? Because there needs to be those as well, because... There's going to be people that are going to gravitate straight to that. Like they don't need to go into these spaces. Here's what they need. So I think it's important for us to be able to deliver those kind of experiences here. One company that actually does that really well and available through the Oculus Quest store for an amazingly cheap price is a company called Trip, T R I P P. They provide some guided meditations a few other really amazing things through their app which again is available through the oculus quest store or is it the meta quest store <laughs> anyway so that's a to... little sponsorship right there hey trip you want to advertise on our show we're uh we're looking to get you some additional people and uh i've never been there you know what but hearing you say that i may go check it out and we'll have to talk about that on a later show that would actually make an interesting show definitely would make an interest so do check it out so learning from other culture and i think that's one of the interesting things to me is that one gets people from all over the world at the visits space vr in particular because there's no blocking like with verizon only people in the us and canada can visit right now but you know chris from germany you know we're from the us we often have people from other countries in europe countries in asia and it's very interesting to have 
different points of views that all these people have. You know, and I think one of the most important that there is, and we'll, you know, but, we well, like in this. wrap in wrapping up that last slide, the mask, like, you know, I love when you're talking about the culture with mask because we are all kind of here behind a mask we are choosing to be how we want to represent ourselves what we want to uh features we want to have and there's and and we're all kind of behind a mask right now and there's something about owning that uh power that you have here which is uh you know there's something to be said about Miss the mystery of that. But keep going. Well, that does bring up an interesting metaverse related topic. It is Avatar. And yesterday I spent a couple of hours making different ready player me avatars. And you know, I, I look a lot younger than I do. I don't seem to have a, a way to add gray hair, but Perhaps I'm missing something. But anyway, you know, that comes down to, you know, you can basically be who you be in terms of creating an avatar that represents you. And you know, I think that's really interesting. And and I love that. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, people always want to talk about the looks element of it. And, you know, when you really, like, bring up the age perspective of it, you're ageless here like to be 80 90 years old if you could hop into this thing 70 years old like you know these people that would see you in real life maybe have no interest talking to you but now in here you have like a whole new life you know you've worked your whole life you're retired now and you are literally ageless to be on an adventure and a journey and that's so powerful. It really, really is. Like, if you really th like thinking about that, I mean, it's, it's, there's such a power in, because so many people are caught up and everyone's got filters on their pictures. Well, this is the ultimate filter because we get to make our, you can look however you want to look, as young or old. Well, I guess we covered that quite well. Um, we'll always be able to learn from other cultures um getting other influences i think that are very important and we should take this chance when we go into the metaverse to be aware that all these different people are coming from so many different places um i met so many people from from places i've never thought i would ever do um also in the beginning when i started um in v time for example um a vr that system similar to this year, just four people could uh, take part and talk together. And I met people from Africa and from Saudi Arabia. And it was so interesting to ask them, like, how do you get around with, with, your, uh, with your media, with your data? And, and what can you see? What can't you see? We have restrictions. Uh, can you see all the movies? All, all these different things that you have this direct connection and you could learn so much about those areas without visiting them and it is really nice and i just can recommend that to anyone come here and and find all the different people and their experiences and try to to share you bring up an interesting point and we touched on this earlier and that is people having access and the concept of universal access. And one of the things that I've been reminded of being here on Allspace VR, for instance, is that people in some countries still have limited data plans where they get allocated so much data a month and going over that is extremely expensive. And the amount of data that one uses in VR can suck down their whole allocation in, you know, an hour or two. And so, you know, again, I think for all of this become a reality, we get universal service people. 
everywhere need to have high speed you know, bandwidth, um, I mean, I'm lucky, I'm a bit, and, but, you know, even here in the U.S., yeah. some people don't have in connectivity. I mean, it's true, but, you know, in another sense, like, we are still in beta here, so it's like, you know, the world is moving at the speed that it can advance to, and, you know, there's always, unfortunately, going to be restrictions to it. You know, there's a lot of people that have access to this world right now. They're just choosing not to be here. They even have bought a headset, but they're just not impressed enough by where it's at right now. So it's sitting on a shelf when really somebody else could use that. So, you know, maybe they, you know, hey, this didn't work for me coming up with programs that, you know, somebody else could have a real value for that. So, I mean, there's a lot of headsets out there, but how many of them are not used also? So it's. You know, there's a lot of factors going in on everything. Yeah, I tried at one point and in much traction, tried to encourage people that, you know, either had moved from the Quest 1 to the Quest 2 or weren't using their heads, but as you say, to donate it to somebody that could get some good use out of it. And people seem to rather prefer keeping things in their closets and giving them away to people that could use them. So, you know, that's uh, another mindset. So, you know, we're on to affect everybody. I think, you know, that's the clue here is respecting everybody that you meet. I mean, as you said, people here are more than just cartoons. Everybody here has a human being behind them. And, you know, it becomes difficult sometimes when there's kids here that are trying to push the boundaries and want to discourage them. But, you know, ultimately, one just has to push the button and kick them out and ban them and whatever. I mean, yeah, the I mean, sorry the thing, the thing is. It. It's true, but the, the, like these are part of all figuring out the metaverse is even from the beginning points of being educated in it and then almost graduating to certain places and then you get access into other places. I mean, that's just the way it should be. Like even as children, like, okay, there's just some things to where it's like, okay, you, you should be learning about all of these things and there's games that fit all of that. And this is where the democracy comes in is like the whole democracy votes. Yeah, uh, they should be able to do all of this. And, you know, it's yeah, I mean, permissions should be granted if you really want to go down this road. But you need to do some education before you get down this road. So it's like this is where it's so important of where we build the infrastructure and how, you know, this behavior and etiquette evolves. Yeah, I mean, respect is something that you have to learn. I mean, um, that it's something that, uh, in my opinion, should be natural for for a human being to have respect and bring in, bring respect to other people, and um, especially in those um, anonymous worlds like those virtual worlds, we sh we shouldn't adopt this behavior from social media. Um, where we think like, well, if nobody knows who I am in real life, I can do whatever I want. Now this is a space where all this human, um, yeah, type of of um, being respectful and 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 not trying to hurt other people and and go stepping over boundaries and stuff. All these rules are not applying because this is a freedom space. Well, sure, somehow it is. But on the other hand, there's always someone else and they want to have a good experience. So, yeah, respect. Um, well, I, I think that there should be worlds for those people that want to behave that way as well. Like. Hey, go yeah. here and you all you can slap each other, you can throw things at each other, you know, you can you can go and do that. 
And, you know, there should be a space for that. If you want to go here and that's what you want to do is throw toilet paper rolls, do it. You know, the, the graffiti cans, you can spray up the place. Like, you know, let's see how messy you can get it. You know, like, you know, there could be a contest of who's able to mess it up the best, you know, and you can compete. And then there could be votes at the end. You know, I think some parents would love to vote of like, who messed up the most, you know, and then you get rewarded <laughs> for it. Okay. Sure, it's a great <laughs> idea. Why not? Why not? You can set this up. There's no problem to do so. Yeah, absolutely right. As long as people do accept that in other worlds, it is not like that. That's that's another boundary. But right. well, anyway. Exactly. 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 Yes, definitely in, an interesting idea. You know, and maybe no, if you behave on. that way, you just get moved into a space that that's all that's going on. And you got to <laughs> stay there for an hour in that chaos, you know, like that could be your, your thing. I like it. I like it. I like it. Purgatory, right? And if, and if you're really, really bad, then you gotta to really terrible. Good. No, good. Good. And then, you know, if you do want to get out of it in less of a period of time, maybe you got to spend five minutes, like, in a dirty world cleaning it up to see, like, all the work that when you make a mess that it takes to clean it up, and then you can get out. So it's, like, lesson learned. You know, we got to it's educate. You know, I know we bring that topic up a lot here, but that's how you inspire people, and I feel like that's how lessons are learned. You know, it's... You know, this whole place is, uh, yeah, it, molding people to be who they want to be, right? No, exactly, exactly. So here we are, the next slide, bridging the language gap. And that's, you know, I think, one of the fascinating things to me about certain worlds, old space, VR, spatial, they both have the ability to do translations on the fly. And so if one speaks a particular language and doesn't speak another language and, and one's in the same room with a person that you can actually use these tools to communicate, which I think is really, really like the very first thing that comes up to me with the language gap that I think is one of the most difficult things to translate and transfer over between cultures is what is funny, right? Because some people think slapping that person is funny. And some people think that that's hurting someone's feelings. And, you know, there's so many things that people uh, would think is funny or offensive from a, a comedic standpoint. So I think that that's going to be one of the hardest things from a language gap to have people really understand what is, but where's that fine line? Cause I feel like comedy is having a real challenge with that because what can we talk about? What can we not talk about? Who's going to be offended? Absolutely. I mean, um, bridging the language gap is for sure also a very technology driven topic because um, we see a lot of artificial intelligence implementations that are trying to do that. As you mentioned, uh, Eric, for sure, uh, trying to convert joke, for example, or sarcasm or whatever um, from one language to the other is extremely hard. There are several, well, uh, artificial intelligence um, systems, IBM, for example, Watson and others, and they say that they can already do so. They could um, take a sentence and then do something like a proper analysis and say, oh, this is probably um, a sarcastic um, uh, a term or not. I think it's extremely um, hard to do so because language is changing a lot. The young people have their complete own language and that shifts from, from people that are 20 to people that are 30 completely. They have different terms um, coming from pop culture or whatever kind of stuff. And it's 
in my opinion, extremely hard to get a technology behind that to translate it properly from, let's say, English to Chinese. Right. That was so very woke still, of you. Please? Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You're speaking very so, woke. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe. But in the end, it's, um, yeah. Now, we, we need to find regulations. We, we, sure, it will, in the end, always depend on the different users. To use a language that anyone can understand. I'm My natural native language is German. You can probably hear that, but I'm having my difficulties to whatever, bring my ideas um, in, in English and, and have the right terms. And uh, well, sometimes it's, it's really hard to do so. But um, also this effort, in my opinion, is, is worth a lot. You learn a lot and you, 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 you learn every day when, when you uh, talk to people that are native English speakers and, and things like that. But you also have to adopt it. You have to, you have to uh, get all these informations from the other people and you have to filter them for yourself and use them in the end. Or just listen to them and then drop them. A good point. And you know, one of the things about VR that I'm you know, always reminded of, depending on what world one's in, is the emojis one has available to one. So, I mean, here's some examples of, you know, various emojis that I'm sure, and I haven't looked at any studies, but I'm sure that they have done some research on which of these emojis are universal to you know, as wide a population as possible. Uh, you know, if someone sends an emoji, for example, with a, a, a sad face on it, everyone's going to know that that's unhappiness. So we I mean, definitely have a, another language out there with these symbols or emojis. 100% and I, I love them. They are great and um, it's a fast way of adopting um, feelings or showing feelings, but it's really hard to have a detailed conversation just using emojis. <laughs> it's a skill. <laughs> it's, it's, it is for sure a skill, but I, and I feel like that's where probably the younger generation because on on, I remember the pager back in the day, like you could put certain series of numbers in there and you knew what those numbers translated to, you know, the 411 is obviously still around and 911 has always been around. Um, and now with emojis, it's opened the dashboard up to where I, I mean, I use a few of them, but. Now, I, I, that's a skill in itself that I feel like more people, we could get better about speaking in a few less things with just expressing a few different things. So um, I do see the value in, in emojis in the future. They're, they're going nowhere. Um, uh, well, sign emojis in uh, sign language. I mean, again, we, also important thing, what happens, let's say the metaverse is growing fast. And a lot of disabled people will also for sure like to join someone who cannot hear. Again, we have this situation in the real world. We need to find a solution for the virtual world. So maybe sign language or having a perfect text translation, like I can click on, on you as an avatar, and then I can see everything written, what you say. Well, I think it could be possible, but we need an artificial intelligence to do that. You need technology for this, but it could be also a chance. Someone who is deaf, who cannot hear, gets into a symposium, has all these different possibilities here. Take a look at the, at the text, see what people are talking, maybe also see what, what his colleagues are talking next to them, or you know, things that are not possible in, in the real world. Yeah, and yeah. I would like to see sign language definitely adapted more here. I mean, obviously, we know thumbs up, thumbs down, you can wave to people, you know, and a few different things. But uh, like emojis, I think that we can have 
or of a understanding of what we can speak with our hands also here as far as having that as a powerful tool with uh, everybody I think should have a certain level of sign language uh, skills and abilities because there is a power in it for sure. Well, let's move on to the next slide. That inappropriate behaviors in VR. We've spoken about this pretty much in length, but you know what is to me the most inappropriate thing is when somebody just you know gets into your space and I mean basically assaults one in VR. That's the most inappropriate, but then, you know, making lewd comments or, you know, nasty comments. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, there's, you know, I, I guess I'm not shocked by some of the things I see and still question, as we said, you know, why would people do that? I mean, um, it's for sure one thing, the behavior of, of other people, of avatars, of, of whatever. But the question is if there might be some inappropriate, um, I won't call it behavior, but inappropriate um, signs, let's say, in uh, a virtual world. For example, um, there are uh, some cultures where the, uh, the swastika, you know, this sign, is used a lot because it's a symbol of luck in Asia. If a German person or a Jewish person, person or someone who has the background from Europe would see that, come into a room with a giant swastika, they would think directly about uh, the Nazis from, from, uh, from Germany, for example. That's a horrible story in the end. Right? So um, there are so many things that can be inappropriate for certain people. That's the cultural background then, again. So you have to be aware of that. Maybe we can filter that. Maybe we can say, well, are there symbols that you don't like to see when you go into a world? Then those could be filtered for you automatically. It would be a possibility, in my opinion. Yeah, well, we could do a lot with that. Right. Yeah. You could basically, as you say, build your perfect world where you could say, I don't want to see this. I don't want to hear this. <laughs> you know, keep me insulated from real life, so to speak. So, you know, and sometimes, I mean, I feel like that, like turning off you know, the, the television and not reading news just, just to get away from it all. So it would be nice to have a, a filter that you can apply overall. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to inappropriate behavior, it's... I mean, it, it goes straight back to educating and, you know, I, I mean, I feel like it's so, it's such a negative connotation that it just makes me want to talk about the appropriate behavior in AI, which is, you know, really the best way for everything to be appropriate is to have people be able to find spaces they're comfortable with at their uh, there's all of these different needs out there and you're providing spaces for these people to experience what they're wanting to experience here. So what somebody would call inappropriate, you know, it's completely appropriate for somebody else because that's what they're seeking out. So it's all open to interpretation of what inappropriate activity is, you know, I mean, there's adults here and there should be adult spaces too, to where like something that for, you know, somebody who's younger, it is not what somebody is a mature adult, you know, wants to go and uh, have conversations that um, is going to be what they are looking for. And, you know, they would not want somebody like under 18 to even be in that room because it's not appropriate for that. That's why they even make movies of NC-17, you know? Like, you would need to go with your parent to see that movie, so should you take your child to see this NC-17 movie, you know, the parent's making that call, but 
you know, we're, we're dealing with the same things here. Like people are going to need to be categorized out of, you know, I, no, I'm in this room and, you know, you have to be able to show that you're a, of a certain age to be in this room. Otherwise, you know, people don't want to take chances at, you know, being in a room and saying something with somebody that is not of age. So um, that's what I got on a program. Oh, but there are some behaviors I think that aren't acceptable. And, you know, as a group of people that live in the metaverse, at least in a private space, right? I mean, what you, in a, yeah, sorry, a public space, what you do in a private space is totally <laughs> up to you. But if you're in a public space, there are certain rules I believe one has to follow. And, you know, that includes not assaulting anyone in any way, you know, keep people's boundaries, you know, unless someone wants to be hugged or unless you know someone intimately, you, you can't you know, just go around hugging people. Most people don't um, in real life. And I think, again, that's the filter that we have to apply here is would you do this in real life? And if not, you know, why would you be doing it in virtual reality? I think that's really the, the key to all of this is, you know, comes down to behaving like a civilized human being, which I know for the most part we're not, but, you know, we need to keep trying. And I think this is an opportunity for us to actually do it because we are exposed to so many cultures in the metaverse that we can learn from each other and you know realize that one group of people isn't better or worse than another group of people you know i won't say that for individuals but you know as groups of people we need to respect everyone out there it's as simple as that we don't seem to be able to do it. And that's really scary. Mm -hmm. Any last thoughts, Eric? Yes. Well, for sure. I think we brought up a lot of important things. For sure, also a lot of things that people should have thought about already in the real world. Uh, in the end, I think the point is Metaverse is for sure a new playground. It opens a lot of new possibilities. But people are staying people. They are the old and the same people like in the real world. So just be respectful and you will have a good experience. I agree. I, I think uh, my thing is time and place, time and place. You know, with as far as etiquette goes, like we, we need to have like the right pieces for the place so people can, everybody can be comfortable for the most part of where they're going, where they're exploring and what they're doing. Good. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you all for attending in greetings from the future. Welcome to the Metaverse, and today we've talked about culture. Next week, we're going to continue to explore the Metaverse and take a look at some of the other worlds out there. So have a great day, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are. Nice to see you, and be sure to check out our YouTube channel and leave us some good thoughts. Thank you. Have a great and day. And don't forget to Thank subscribe. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>